Jeremy, I think now, isn't that right? Oh. Yeah, Jeremy, you're very welcome. Jeremy's from um, South Africa and he's a champion rower and he's joined the Legion only three years ago. He's an avid reader and he loves books on the Legion and of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he's going to speak to us tonight, tell us the story of Christmas um, by Frank Duff. So Jeremy, you're very welcome and thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Brona. Thank you, Lauren. That was a very kind introduction. Thank you also to Maria, to Emmanuel, Father John. Thank you to the choir and thank you to Father Paul. Um, the Legion has been a blessing in my life. It has taught me a certain discipline in my faith and has deepened my love for our blessed Mother Mary, Jesus Christ, our almighty Son, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And it is the Christmas season, Advent now, the beginning of our new life. I won't say much more, but rather I will let Frank Duff speak. I'm going to read to you from an article he wrote called Christmas. We have extracted a few paragraphs from the original article. Here goes. Christmas by Frank Duff. The time of Christmas and Epiphany is one of unmixed happiness. It is one of the few seasons of the church year which have that purely blissful note. The sorrowful sequel to the events of this time is still far ahead. We are able to put the thought of it out of our minds and to immerse ourselves in the sheer joy of this period. It is a grace, I think, to be able to feel that joy because it is an indication that whatever our defects may be, we are attuned to the church and its life. The very thought of the coming of our Lord should have the effect of stirring us to our depths. Of all events, it is really the central one, that divine coming among us promised from the very beginning. How many years before was it that those words were uttered which promised the Redeemer, I will set enmities between thee and the woman? What hopes rested on that prophecy? And now, at the time that we are commemorating, the long foretold event is about to take place. We would expect that around such a portentous happening, there would be a setting that could be regarded as appropriate, something impressive. Should not that woman and her child of intertwined destiny appear in the heavens, clad in light, an astounding, even terrifying spectacle, overpowering the emotions of men. But as we are aware, things worked out in very different fashion. The, the, the reality strikes the opposite pole. It is not tremendous, but painfully simple, not divine looking, but abjectly human not royal or rich, but poor, penniless, no palace, not even a habitation. Truly God's ways are not our ways. Christmas is drawing nigh. The days of the expectation of the child have arrived. Our Lady's preparations are advanced. Her sewing is done. The hearts of Joseph and herself are full of rapture. The long-awaited one, the hope of nations, the salvation of the world, he that is wonderful, the counselor, God the mighty, father of the world to come, the prince of peace, is shortly to appear to human eyes. 
Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy, that was beautiful. 